Good afternoon. Let's go ahead and get started with today's House Judiciary Committee meeting. If you would uh, bow your heads with me, we will begin like we always do with a word of prayer. Lord, we thank you for this day, this beautiful day, and we ask you now as we proceed as the House Judiciary Committee that you will give us the wisdom that we always ask for to do what is best for our state and the people of Georgia. Bless us and keep us as we move forward. Amen. You can go ahead and do business for it. I just got one if you want. You need to print it, don't you? Uh, yeah, but I just need to print with her abstraction. Y'all have the other one already. In okay, we'll go ahead and I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it right now. Yep. Okay. All right. Um, let's see. Chairman Stone, why don't you come on up? And uh, I know you and Chairman Abstraction have had a conversation about uh, the business court bill, and um, we've already had one hearing about it and talked about the, the Senate bill and the House bill. And we specifically talked about several of the things that we liked uh, in the Senate bill, some of which were, were put into the House bill. So I think what we have in front of us now is the substitute to 110 is in most part, the bill's very similar to the one that we passed out of the House, com this committee, and I think by unanimous vote. And um, Mr. Abstration, I know that you have um, put some things from the Senate bill into the bill. How, how about we let him talk about that and then we'll have a general discussion about it. Is that okay? That's fine. I want to make sure I have the current LC. Uh, 1957S? I don't have 1957S. Oh, you don't? Get, let's get a copy for the Senate. I apologize, Senator. No problem. Um, So while the senator looks over that, um, Chairman Estration, why don't you walk us through some of the changes that occurred since the bill left this committee? Because we, what we do have in front of us is the pretty much the House bill with some of the changes. Go ahead and elaborate on that. Yes, sir. That's exactly right. This is the House language that was put in here. There were two things that were in the Senate bill that we really liked, and so we made two changes. The first is that uh, the clerk of the business court's salary would be indexed to the clerk of the Court of Appeals, and that is something that, uh, that we liked and agreed to. Um, we also included a tolling uh, part that what, what it would allow for is if a party that's currently in state or superior court sought to transfer or the parties sought to remove the case and for whatever reason it's not ultimately accepted by the business court judge that there would be a tolling of the statute for that period of time so that uh, couldn't be used plan is couldn't be used to game um, uh, filing and statutes there is one recommended amendment that I would make here today, and that is uh, we have throughout stated that we, and the Constitution provides also that we would not, and the amendments going out to the members here, but that we would not do away with any existing business court. And so all this would do is in lines 29 and 31, uh, we would add or continuing and existing would be the, the amendment in those two lines so that the Metro Business Court that's currently in existence could continue to exist or as you can see if a circuit wanted to create a business court they'd still be able to with this bill. So line 29 you would add in after creating you would add in or continuing and existing yes sir and then do the same thing on line 31. Yeah, it'd be into line 30 after creating or there you go. and then continuing and existing. Okay. All right. Does everybody see those? Do you have a copy of that? Senator? There you go. I'm sorry. There you go. Right there. Okay. Um, as was already mentioned, we've already had one hearing on the Senate bill when it came over and had a good conversation with Senator Stone. What you have in front of you is the House bill with the changes that, Senate, that uh, Chairman Efstration mentioned with the one amendment that he's also offered. Are there any 
Did you have any comments? I was going to go for questions. Did you have any comments you want to make, Senator? Uh, no comments. Uh, I think the current amendment is warranted. Um, and uh, the only issue, major issue that we have now is uh, the consent of the party. And that, that is one of the differences between the House version and the Senate version that will have to be worked out. Right, they'll have to be worked out. Okay. Um, questions from members of the committee for either the senator or for Chairman F. Strachan. Mr. Walensky? Uh, I, I just leaned over. Regarding the new amendment on yes, line 29 sir. and 31, should it say, should it be, should we add an A before or, creating A or continuing and existing? Should there be an A? Creating or I don't think so. No. Creating okay. A, creating or continuing an existing. Creating a business Hmm. Oh, it took out an A. <laughs> so you think putting the A back in would would um Cause make it clear? What do you think? From I have no objection to that, Mr. Walensky. You want to you want to add the A back? <laughs> I do. Let's put a little A right there. That's what I'm here Let's for. Council, do, do do you understand what the question is? Um, it's not about a comma. It's about I'm curious about one letter. <laughs> a. Turn your mic around there. Where are we adding the the A? They would add it on line 29 in uh -huh. front of the word or. And then so, add it on line 30 in the amendment in front of the word A. And uh, do, do you have the amendment right there? I do. Yeah, okay. I do. So it will say to preclude a superior court from creating or continuing an existing. I guess where, where would A go again? I'm sorry. Just go after people. Yeah, no, I think you're right. It doesn't make okay. sense when you read it all together. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I don't, you don't want to offer that, do you? Yeah, okay. All right. I want to read sure. it all together, Mason. Yeah, there, there, there was one thing I failed to mention before, but we did discuss the, in the previous hearing, and that is that part four of the bill, which begins on 478, is additional language that was requested by the clerks of court following from the e-file uh, provisions. And so I failed to mention that before. I don't believe Chairman Stone, well, I don't know if he has an objection to that. I don't no think there was an issue with yeah, I think, that. Before. Actually, I think the courts recognize that, yes, too, sir. and ask us to fix that so they could it would make consistent the rules we have on e-filing. Yes, now. sir. Thank you, Chairman. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Any other questions or comments? If not, does the chair hear a motion for due pass by the committee substitute uh, SB 110? So moved. There is a motion and a second. I know we have one amendment that we want to make. You want to move your amendment now? Yes, Mr. Chairman. My amendment would be on lines. Let me make sure. Line 29. 29, after the word creating. In place of the word A on line 29, be or continuing and existing. And. Same on line 30. Yes, sir. On line 30, replace A with or continuing and existing. Ledge Council, you have that? Okay. There's a motion. Is there a second? Second. There's a second. Any discussion? Is there any objection? Hearing none, that is in. All right. Now we have the bill in front of us. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you, Senator. Look forward to talking with you more about it. Right, um, Senator Kirkpatrick, you want to come on forward? Senator, you have uh, Senate Bill 32, which has been affectionately referred to as the hot dog bill. And uh, there has been a pretty significant uh, rewrite, and I want to thank uh, Judge Scoggins and Mr. Lewinsky for working on this because of their love for puppies. Uh, and, uh, yeah, and Bonnie, that's right. Uh, um, Miss Rich as well, yeah. I get. We, we, you, she, she, Senator has a copy of the of the of the rewrite. Okay, yes, 
Go ahead, go ahead, Senator. I've seen it, and uh, this used to be called the hot car animal bill, and now it truly is the hot dog bill. Yeah. So um, I just want to thank the members of the committee who worked on the rewrite. I think that the language is clear, and um, I accept the changes that were made. And, Senator, just to summarize, and I'll let our subcommittee that worked on this certainly chime in, but there was some concern in, in subcommittee uh, on, the, on the bill with the idea that it, um, the main intent was obviously dogs, but it opened up a lot more questions when we thought about horses and, uh, you know, uh, being pulled and, and uh, horse, I guess, what do you call them? Horse carriage, not carriages, wagons, what do you call them? Trailers, trailers. horse trailers, there we go. Horse trailers, and, uh, and all kind of issues started coming up, and so we said let's go back to what we really meant here. Also, we added in a necessity to get this protection that you do call 911. I know Representative Bruce was, was spoke about that a good bit and, and did a good job on it. And I think, um, what other points um, am I missing? Uh, my my faithful puppy lovers here who that we talked about. Mr. Walensky, pressure, pressure button there. Go ahead. Uh, thank you, Chairman. The other thing we did here is we made it where if somebody does rescue a puppy after calling 911 that they have no claim against the owner of the dog or the owner of the vehicle. <laughs> so we put a lot of clarifying and limiting language in, and I think it is uh, it uh, took care of a lot of the questions that popped up. And Senator, we appreciate you working with us on that. Um, any questions for the Senator uh, regarding the bill? Any questions for our subcommittee regarding the substitute that you have in front of you? Your, you who, who do you have carrying the bill for you, Senator? Representative Rich. Rich, okay, all right. So um, um, let's go ahead and put it in the form of a motion if we could. Is there a motion due pass by committee substitute um, SB 32 that you have in front of you? There's a motion and a second. Now discussion. Any further discussion? I don't think we have anybody signed up to talk about this either. So I will once again thank you, Senator, and all your hard work, and we'll go ahead and take a vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Appreciate it. <laughs> that was good. Yeah, well, it was pretty good. Yeah. Yes. Do I have to put my district 121? Okay. That is your district, right? It is. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Senator Payne, won't you come on forward? Good to see you again. Good to see you again. Appreciate you, yeah. appreciate you being here. Yours is Senate Bill 104. We do have a few people signed up to talk about it. I know there was a good bit of discussion as well in, in subcommittee on your bill. So why don't you tell the full committee about uh, Senate Bill 104, if you would. Uh, Senate Bill 104, this is a bill that was brought to uh, by the Family Policy Alliance of Georgia. Um, basically, a, a young child was um, in Missouri, I believe it was, was found that after birth and a few months old, the child died. And then later on, the parents found out that there was a do not resuscitate order in the child's file that they had no knowledge of. So this organization just really, and George already is required that you know a parent have can give consent to a DNR order, um, but this language that's currently in the law was just part of it said a parent may consent orally or in writing. It was really just the, just the objective was to clarify that language and strengthen so it's no one would confuse that you know that they, they if you may then you may not consent. So uh, that was just uh, that was our objective with this, and I'm not sure. Um, we have worked with trying to clarify the language, and I said I'm just open up to the will of the committee and, and that we can make sure that we get this fixed so that we can move forward. And I know we have some folks lined up to speak on the bill, Senator, but are there any questions of the Senator? Mr. Bruce. This is just out of curiosity. Did they ever find out who did put the order on there? And <coughs> was that in, in Missouri, it wasn't in the statute that they have to have the, the, they didn't have, from what I understand, it was it was not the statute that in Missouri that they had to have parental consent in those cases where the child was. So I, that's from what I understand. So that's that's what led the charge to just so we need to tighten up the laws and across the country and the states to make sure that there's 
all parents are always given the opportunity to, to offer their consent. Okay. Mr. Walensky, did you change your mind? Okay. Any other questions of the author? Okay. Senator, why don't you just slide over just a little bit and we've got three people signed up and we'll we'll let them come forward. Uh, Joshua Edmonds, the Georgia Life Alliance. Joshua, good to see you today. Welcome. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, go ahead and introduce yourself, and we'd be happy to hear from you. Sure thing. My name is Joshua Edmonds. I'm the Executive Director of Georgia Life Alliance. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, for hearing this bill today. Uh, this is an incredibly important piece of legislation that's before you. Um, and I've actually been talking with the mother of uh, the, the namesake of this bill, Simon, for the past several years about this piece of policy. And so I want to actually speak to you on behalf of her for a moment. Um, back in 2010, their son Simon was born uh, in Missouri, and it became evident shortly after he was born that he was suffering from trisomy 18. Uh, and he was in the care of the hospital in the NICU. And after uh, several weeks of care in the NICU, just before they were going to have their pre-op appointment to conduct surgery on his heart to help repair some of the damage that was, was present in his body, uh, he, he began to his oxygen levels began to drop and over the next uh, several hours Simon slowly died and after the pain and agony subsided uh, his parents looked into why the the NICU was was not attentive to provide resuscitation and certain levels of care for Simon while he was at the hospital and it turned out that one of the attending physicians had issued a do not resuscitate order in Simon's file and they had not been consulted and not had, had not given consent and if they had been asked they would not have given consent for the DNR and so the bill before you merely as Senator Payne uh, expressed goes into clarify because the current language says that, that a parent may provide oral or written consent for a DNR for a minor patient we want to change it to a, a shall so that we can ensure that as all of the parents are in this room I'm sure can sympathize me as a father of three and one on the way would never want a situation where we're in a healthcare setting with our child who is fighting for their lives and to find out later that we weren't given the opportunity to speak into the situation and help ensure that the highest level of care was provided. So we, we trust our doctors to provide the highest standard of care, but we want to make sure there's clarity in the law so that the parents or the legal guardians of that child always have a say to provide that consent uh, to issue a do not resuscitate order before it's being placed in the file uh, without consulting with them. So this, this legislation is law in Kansas. It was passed unanimously from the Missouri State House recently, also the Arizona State House. It's supported by National Right to Life, Georgia Life Alliance, uh, as well as the American College of Pediatrics. Uh, and so we just ask for your favorable, favorable consent in this, this legislation. Thank you, Joshua. We appreciate you being here today. We do have someone with a question for you. Ms. Silcox, yes, is that you? Yes. Um, thank you so much, Mr. Chairman, and thank you, Senator Payne, for bringing this. I think this is a really um, important bill on many levels, but um, particularly uh, with the life of a child. I'm just curious, um, of course, if the, if the minor is being cared for by a parent still, um, we would want the, the parents' consent first, but had y'all contemplated, we had some legislation we considered earlier this session about equitable caretakers, um, and could they also be given the rights here? That's currently in the code section. Mm -hmm. If you look on uh, line 19, mm -hmm. um, that's the se subsection that C. That is the subsection that, that, that C, has, okay. That has all the equitable caregivers. Great, perfect, thank you. Any other questions? From the committee. Thank you, Joshua. We Thank you, Chairman. You Thank you, committee. Today. Next, we have, um, let's see, Dave, is it Baker? Yes. Dave, come on. Good to see you today, Dave. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. All right. Welcome. Tell us who you're with, and we'll be happy to hear from you. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. My name is Dave Baker. I represent Faith and Freedom Coalition of Georgia. We're here today, Faith and Freedom, to speak in support of this bill. Just very briefly, it's it's a good bill. Um, you know, just almost don't want to think about the pain that a family would have to go through having a child on death's door passing away, and only to find out that they weren't even consulted as to you know care for their own child at the most critical point <laughs> in their child's life. So we'd certainly urge your um, favorable consideration of this bill. And I just might add another situation, a personal experience, where as a volunteer 
lawyer for another organization involved not a child but an adult without decision making capability in, in a permanent vegetative state and it was just a question of intervening on behalf of a family there was some question as to whether a DNR order had been issued and just intervening on behalf of the parent to make sure that their wishes were respected and you know just a question of, but miscommunication can happen and, and I've seen that firsthand and so it just um, you know would certainly hope that a family is consulted you know at a critical time in their lives okay thank you any questions thank you for being here today Dave thank appreciate you. it mm -hmm. and last we have Anna Adams of the Georgia Hospital Association Anna welcome good to see you, thank you sir. please introduce yourself and we'd be happy to hear from you thank you um, I'm Anna Adams with the Georgia Hospital Association. Thank you for allowing me to speak to you about this bill today. We have been working with Senator Payne over the last several years to make sure that this bill is very clear as to who can consent to a do not resuscitate order for a minor child. Um, fortunately, Georgia does already have great um, code language surrounding the, uh, the way that the events have to occur in order to get to a physician issuing a do not resuscitate order. Um, one of the things that was just previously brought up was the changing of the word may to a shall. And for the committee's education, that's sort of where we started with this a couple of years ago. Um, it seems like an innocuous change. However, um, when you change that may to a shall, it creates a situation where the parents don't have a choice except to sign the DNR. So we want to make sure that they still have that option. Um, and you've seen the substitute and you believe it does that? Yes. Okay, and so good. the substitute language that you have before you today we think clarifies the situation where a parent could consent to a minor without making it um, redundant or creating a situation where the child could not get a DNR if they're a candidate. So we are in support of this particular language and we appreciate you giving us the opportunity to weigh in on that. Questions for Anna? Thank you so much for being here today. We appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Any further questions of the senator before we debate the bill? Thank you, Senator. Just hang, hang tight for a second. Well, hold on a second. Uh, it seems the, thank you, Chairman. It seems the old code language only had parent. Is there any reason we would or would not extend it to legal guardians also? Well, that was the uh, question. That would be line 10. Yeah. Oh, that was line Line 19 and line 10. Line 19 right, makes you. a reference to it by, by another you. subsection. Thank you. Yeah, I'm absolutely. Fired, Good question. Okay, anybody else? Okay. All righty. Um, we'll bring the bill back to the committee now. Is there a motion to pass? There's a motion, and that's due pass by sub. Uh, the, the LC you have in front of you there by substitute. Uh, there's a motion. There's a second. Further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? We also want to recognize so the bill passes that uh, Judge Weaver is here with us today. Judge Weaver, good to see you. Thank you. How are things up in Pickens County? Good, good. To, a little cold. <laughs> it was cold here this morning when the wind was blowing. But well, we appreciate you being with us today. Thank you very much. We uh, we may very well have a meeting tomorrow. Uh, we had some things come out of subcommittee uh, this morning uh, that that are probably going to be candidates and some uh, I think some ledge council work being done for us on those. So uh, stay close. I'm thinking more likely morning rather than afternoon. But uh, we'll watch your email and we'll let you know for sure. Okay. Anything else? For, yes, sir. Who is this house sponsor? Who is your house sponsor, Senator? Uh, that will be Representative Casey Carpenter. Casey Carpenter. Okay. Thank you so much. We'll stand adjourned now. Mm -hmm.